Hello and welcome to the Man Like Radio podcast. Now let's do some godly talk for godly walk. Well, hello, I'm Richard Board. Welcome to the Man Like Radio podcast. I want to say God bless to all of you who are listening. We are talking today. We've got a special program today. But before we go into it, I want to remind you real quickly, we got to give you this stuff here. And that is number one. Don't forget, you can listen to us. Or first of all, you can, you can email us at manlikeradio at gmail.com. That's manlikeradio at gmail.com. Then secondly, you can go to manlikeradio.com and hit the red button if you want to get your comments and questions in somewhere down in the middle of the program we'll do that so go to manlikeradio.com or you can text it in and by the way you stay anonymous we don't do a search on you i get the fbi after you uh as long as you behave but 830-914-0145 that's 830-914-0145 and then those who are listening or joining in uh, later on uh, want to join later on of course as you know you can go back and listen to the program and share it and we encourage you share the this program tonight get it out there so once again i'll repeat this a little bit later on if you want to get your text in uh just go to uh, 830-914-0145 or just go to manlightradio.com hit the red button and get your questions in well got a great program today and and uniquely we have a double guest and so i want to introduce you robert and sonia can too how you guys doing hello how y'all doing Hi, how are you? Okay, we're so good. We're, good. we're blessed to be on the show. Yeah, well, we're going to get right into this because I know that as we talk about this, we're going to be talking about why men won't marry. So, since this is a man like show, let's start with the man first. Uh, Robert, uh, now I know you and Sonia are going to be pretty honest in some areas here. So, just, first of all, tell us about yourself a little bit. You don't have to go into great detail, but tell us about yourself. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, let's see here. Um, been married for about eight years now. Okay. Uh, going on nine, known each other since we were in middle school. Um, um, I, needless to say, I married my best friend and, uh, we have, uh, let's see how many kids we got. Okay. You don't have to say how many. It's okay. <laughs> All right. I know. No. Kids, you know, married with children, you know, the life. <laughs> Live, live oh, the life, live the dream. Okay, so you knew each other from 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 uh, junior high. Yes. So she was that Correct. smart Val Victorian girl in school, the beautiful one that nobody <laughs> could ever talk to. And uh, you were like, one day, one day. <laughs> See, I never yeah, happened to me. She... I just say I knew one from elementary. I knew in junior high. I knew in high, <laughs> and not one of them. No, I end up with Nelly. Not one. Then, then I, <laughs> so uh, yeah, anyway, maybe I, still, work out. maybe I still be in New York City. Okay, uh, 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 Sonia, what do you have to say? Well, um, no, I mean, pretty much the same. We've known each other for such a very long time. Actually, most of our most of our lives. But like he said, we've been married for eight years, and um, you know, we were. Um, you know, living together before we got married, so. Oh, so that's what we're going to talk about, because you started right into it, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, we kind of, we kind of did things differently, A, a little say. backwards. A little backwards. <laughs> okay, so Robert, let me get with you. Um, what, what's your analogy of why men have a tendency, why we as men have a tendency to live together, live instead of marry? You think it's fair? Uh, at the time, I thought it was completely fair. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, no, I meant I meant like fearful. <laughs> oh, fearful! Yeah. I thought fair. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, I, I I honestly feel um, it could be a uh, multiple different reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, fear, of course, dominating. But where did the fear come from? You know, it obviously come from. Um, you know, sometimes broken homes. Uh, for my, for me, I come from a divorced home. Uh, when my parents divorced, uh, the enemy put it in my head that I would never get married and I would live 
uh, the bachelor life for the rest of my life. Um, so, you know, spirit, and, and I would like to say too, on that spirit, uh, spirit, uh, spiritually, I wasn't prepared and right. being, right. And, and I wasn't prepared at all, you know, mm-hmm. to, to become a husband, a father. Um, I just thought it was everything that you see on TV shows and it was nothing like the movies. I tell you that. Now, 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 not to go and dig in any privacy issue there, but I just want to say this. You did have a child together before you all officially uh, officially got married, correct? That is correct. So yes, sure. my question to you then is, and I just want to get this out for the guys, especially Christian men out there, because you know, Robert, this is what men deal with, and especially today, right? So what I'm saying, Christian men, so what you said earlier about a fear, you know, of children, but yet still you had a child before. Oh yeah, there was no fear in and making the kids. You know, that's <laughs> that's something that came naturally. You know, you know it came naturally, and and uh, I would like to hit on that where the you know we as uh, you know if anyone listening out there living with your girlfriend or, or your boyfriend and y'all been uh, in essence playing house and y'all do have children together, just watch who's blessing your relationship because um, sometimes the blessings ain't coming from from the man above and you think oh we're good we're we're all right we're we're happy but god wants to take you from happy to joy from happy to joyful and the only way uh that happens is that of course i don't know if i'm going ahead of myself is no no, is no you fact. you fine you, you you fine go ahead keep going you know uh, you know it's just that we think we're we're okay with where we're at and we we're content but god has so much more for your relationship um and it could go from being happy to being joyful. Okay, and, so be- between the man and the woman I'm talking to, which one wanted to marry first? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, that would be me. I I did. Okay. But uh, I mean, it, it wasn't like that at first. Um, so why, you know, just, why don't you just set an ultimatum? <laughs> <laughs> and that's actually that's kind of actually what did happen and it, it wasn't <laughs> <laughs> oh I knew this was going to take I knew this was going to oh, take a turn man. go ahead I don't want to <laughs> <laughs> go ahead we're supposed okay. to leave the past in the past <laughs> <laughs> go ahead um, so yeah no um, the thing is is that I, I don't I wasn't saved when we got together right and um, you know, so again, spiritually prepared, like he was saying, it, it has a lot to do with it. And I think that once I gave myself to the Lord, um, I didn't quite understand a lot of things, but you know, I, I did start to have that heart change. And, and, and let me just point this out too, because, um, when we did get married, it, it, we weren't, it, it wasn't like one of those things like where, oh, we're, you know, we're in love, we're happy. Like, it wasn't like a fool's rush in kind of thing. Like, we're going to elope and, you know, tell our family later and kind of thing. It was, you know, we had a house together. We had our daughter. We had, you know, um, we had a, I mean, we were full blown family. We had living, living, uh, you know, playing house or whatnot. And so, um, when it came to it, you have all of these things that you're doing, like you're living like as if you're married, but you don't have that actual commitment. And there's just so many things spiritually that I think um, we don't, under, you know, we're not understanding. So when I did uh, give myself to the Lord, that was one of the things that was pressed on my heart that I knew that we were, we weren't living right, you know? And um, so from there, it just, you know, we, and then, and then here's a unique thing for the both of you, Robert. You can answer this too. Okay, I know you mentioned about your parents divorcing, but ultimately, your parents were married before. It wasn't, you know, what I'm saying, same thing with you, son. Your parents are still married. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I hear people say, well, a lot of this happens because they come from uh, where they don't know a father or mother. You both knew your father and mothers, and right. they were together. Definitely, yes. And so, I think we both came from. Go ahead. We both we both came from different, you know, like his like with his family, they were together. Um, for so long and they married when he was older so it had a huge impact on his life for me my parents were together for so long and for you know since they were young and they stayed together but um they you know I saw so much in that so I was scared as well as to is this marriage is this what marriage is like you know Mm -hmm. and so that kind of put possibly a fear in me but you know on a woman's perspective you know I just I think that sometimes insecurities have a lot to do with that, and 
And um, I know that may sound, I mean, don't tell an independent uh, woman that she's insecure, trust me. <laughs> you know, so for, for there's any ladies out there listening, I, you know, um, especially a girl who can, you know, a woman that can, you know, is handling her, you know, her own uh, finances and taking care of the kids and doing those things. There's a complete difference between being independent and still having insecurities. And I think that's where women tend to, um, it's in those insecurities where women tend to just kind of be okay, not understanding the spiritual aspect. I, I was just kind of re- reminded in Genesis when there was the, um, the fall and God is talking to the woman about the childbearing pain and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And he talks about in Genesis three sixteen where he says that the, um, the woman's desire will be for her husband and he will rule over her. Now, I know that sounds really harsh, but let me just talk about the desire for her husband. When a woman has committed in her heart and her mind, but not, you know, you know, has committed in her heart and her mind that this man could be the one, she's already kind of placed him as her husband. And so it's really, really hard. Um, That's where those insecurities come in. You know, she doesn't want to lose him. She doesn't want to see him with anybody else. Um, You know, there's so many different types of insecurities. Uh, For a single woman, that's it. She has that longing for her husband. And that is, she's placed it in her heart that that's him. So she doesn't want to lose that. Okay, Robert. She, Robert, can you can uh, can can you from a man's perspective, what do you say about that? I mean, this was the gal you knew from high from junior high. Um, yes. I'm sure you had a lot of love for her. Um, but what I'm saying is, but but what can you say in that respect as a man? I mean, I know what to say. We probably said the same thing you're going to say. But what would you say in that respect? Is that <laughs> is it an insecurity for a man too? He doesn't want to lose her. Um, yeah, I was definitely insecurities on both sides, you know, um, as a man, as a man, uh, a man wants to feel, uh, secure, um, with, with the one that he chooses to be with, you right. know, uh, uh, a longevity, especially in longevity. So, um, uh, I'm going to go out and I'm going to put a check mark on the man right here because of course the woman needs to be, uh, <laughs> the, uh, it's, it's fearful. I mean, when the, when both parties are not, when both man and or, or man and woman are not prepared, this is what you get. You get insecurities on both sides when the woman's not prepared on her end as right. far as being that that um, that the helpmate that she is called to be, where she's giving encouragement and 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 um, and uh, I mean, be, be, besides washing the dishes and cooking and cleaning, I mean, those are all great qualities, you know. <laughs> to have, but I'm talking about spiritually, um, um, you know, um, getting, getting, you know, getting to know your, your, your man in a right. whole nother level where nobody knows him but your woman. So, you know, there, there's a, there's a tug of war sometimes. Well, I ain't gonna, I'm not gonna give and he doesn't give and I'm not gonna give and he doesn't give. And that's just the enemy. You know, the number one goal of the enemy is to keep the, the, to divide the family, to keep the man from becoming who he should be. Uh, we see that in Genesis when 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 the uh, when um, the serpent spoke and, and kind of spoke to the woman and kind of divided the family right there. The covenant right. was already made, but the enemy always got to try to come and and divide. Okay, so l- let me add this in here because I want to go back to what Sonia had said earlier, and then come back to what you're saying because you're both basically saying this. Deep down, there's an insecurity in both parts. Yes, yes. The woman yes. afraid to lose think- lose. Of course, a woman will admit it quicker. And the man is afraid to lose, but he just well because we're guys, you know, we got pride. We don't we're we're the we're the dominant me Tarzan and she Jane. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, we don't yeah, want to. Yeah. But you're right. Insecurity on both sides. You, I mean, a man knows when he gets a good woman. Yes, sir, he does. And a man yeah. knows, and he knows when he okay. And the same thing. So that inse- So what you're saying is uh, w- now some people might disagree with y'all that when you live together, uh, people are living together, they're insecure. So is it because a lack of faith in getting the married covenant yeah. wise? That's what I was going to kind of like get into is that it's not so much that because on the outside, when you're living together, like Robert said, it looks okay. Like you're okay. Like everything's, you know, somewhat okay. You got your issues or what, you know, your little issues that you have just like, you know, in a married marriage relationship where you're actually married and have a covenant, but you also have, um, 
then then but this what I'm talking about is insecurities is the spiritual part of it. Right. Because outward it doesn't seem like insecurities. Outwardly it just looks like an independent woman, like for for my case, you know, like an independent woman who's coming in, okay, then you have you know, the, you know, you have your man uh, who you can see as your husband, you see him in that way, you've connected yourself in that way in your heart. So outwardly, you don't, it doesn't look like that. But understanding what that scripture is saying, that she has that longing for her husband, because oh, there will be tons of women that will be like, I don't know why I stay. I don't know why I allow, why I stay like this, or why I allow to just continue, and he doesn't marry me. And they they, they constantly think that it's something with them that is mm-hmm. not right, you know, or, or whatever the case is. And so... Not understanding or connecting the two, not understanding that spiritual part of it and what that scripture means, that longing. I feel like God has placed that longing in women, um, and that's how he ordains it. But the thing is, is that we don't, as women, not understanding that or being prepared spiritually, we don't understand that he is the bridegroom, Mm -hmm. that he is the husband that we should be longing for. So we don't understand that at the time. We just know we connected with this man. <clears throat> we see him as our husband, the one that he's going to complete us, make us whole. And from there, it's so hard to just make that righteous stand because we don't want to lose them, especially if you have children together. I mean, you have your insecurities. If you're just a single woman and you're living together with your, you know, with your significant other. Mm-hmm. But when you have children, now it's like on a, on a, it's on a huger scale. Right. Now you just right. want to raise children alone. You don't want your kids to be without a father. You don't want, you, you know, there's so many different things. And all of those boil down to insecurities. It right. may not look like that on the outside, but that's what it does boil down to. Right. Well, let me let me go to this. Uh, let me go to this now, Robert. Okay, so we've talked about so that. That's a big major pitfall. I was going to ask you to give a list of pitfalls in, in living together. And I think you've really hit the main one. Fear and insecurity, lack of faith. Uh, yes. Do you think also? Uh, w- okay. Uh, so here are some, and we got to go to a break in a minute. We're gonna, I'm gonna read this off. Then we're gonna go to break, and then you're gonna come back and answer it. Uh, these questions here before we go to some other ones. But here are some, here are some uh, things here. It says here why reasons why men, Robert, won't marry the lady. And now you, don't, I don't want you to say yes because I don't want to hear a gunshot go off. <laughs> okay, and then I, I'm, only, I'm only interviewing your wife. But it, here's what I here here it is: bossy, trying to live too expensive, um, save money, uh, uh, save money, wedding too costly. That might sound like a terrible one. Uh, no say in anything. These are guys who are living with a woman and a Christian man, and they're saying this is the reason why they won't marry them. Which to me, if I'm living with you after about a year and this is happening, that already tells me. <laughs> You know. Okay. All right. Anyway, uh, her wedding. It's her wedding, not mine. Can um, this one here? Can 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 bail out when I want to? Uh, suspiciously, suspiciously, suspiciously jealous. Afraid family won't accept her. Argues too much. Uh, stay for stay for the sex, not the commitment. And then the last one here, uh, suffocating her. But you hold on to that. Because we're going to go to a break, and we'll be right back. Want to tell you, want to get once again, you're listening to the Man Like Radio, and those of you who have joined in, thank you for coming in. Want to give a shout out to all of you out there. Hello, you can get your questions in either on social media right after the break. You can put it in right now. You can go to manlikeradio.com, hit the red button. You can do it through email, manlikeradio at gmail.com, manlikeradio at gmail.com, and get in. Or you can go ahead and call us. When I say call us, text us, and all this you stay at. Rest- the only place you won't stay anonymous, of course, is social media. But these others, you'll stay anonymous, and you can do 830-914-0145. So if you have a question for Robert and Sonia, uh, we're going to try and ask. We're talking about why men won't marry. We're going to go to the break, and we'll be right back. Thank you for joining in to the program today. It's a pleasure to have you. But listen, we need subscribers. We need you to subscribe to us. Now, you can subscribe to us two ways. You can do so on the social media you're watching, or you can go to manlightradio.com and join up to our email. That's right. Subscribe to us, guys, so that way we can keep in touch. We can send you news of what's going on. At the same time, we can get together, and when we have giveaways and so forth, you can be a part of that. So once again, 
thank you so much but we do need subscribers and we do need you to subscribe so please take that time and go ahead and either hit the subscribe button whatever social media you're on or at the same time go to manlightradio.com and send us an email at manlightradio at gmail.com well let's go right back into the program We are back once again to the Man Light Radio. I want to say thank you for those who are getting your questions in. Hello out there to Chris and 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 Anna and those out there. Thank you so much. But we'll, before we do get to the questions, Robert, I do want to ask you this because I asked you this at the break, and we're going to get and Sonia, you can come in later on. Ask, but Robert, uh, <laughs> let's go real quickly. Is it uh, because of, some guys say she's too bossy? That's not going to change in a marriage, will it? <laughs> well, I tell you this: um, uh, in a marriage, just know that when you get married, you have the number one uh, counselor on your back, and and that 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 has your back. And that if you pray, I know with Sonia and I, one of the reasons what took me a while for us to get married was I wanted her to change. I definitely wanted to see change in her, and as well, she wanted to change in me. Uh, we, man, we were always uh, beefing. We were always fighting. Uh, we couldn't seem to get it right uh, for so long. We, I mean, we lived together five years before we even got married. And, I mean, you could ask my family. You could ask whoever. Uh, I, I had to keep my, my closet in the trunk of my car because I didn't know where I was staying at every two weeks. That's how bad it was. Uh, and I tell you what, we're not even supposed to be here today, but by the grace of God, we made it through. And it was because we started going to uh, we started going to church, and and um, and yet uh, nothing was happening. Uh, I wanted this change so much. We kept fighting and arguing, and um, one day I was sitting in church, and the Holy Spirit hit me and told me, "Well, I, I want." I want you to give me your, your relationship and watch me change it. Get under the covenant of God and watch me change it. So, you know, um, the bossiness uh, uh, to that answer, to that question, uh, I could say Sonia was a really control freak at the beginning. And as uh, I guess we got married and those insecurities went away um, because at the end of the day, the woman wants to know that the man's accountable for her. Right, right, that's true. And 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 that's and going to give her a stable life. And then once you get married, the stable life, you can concentrate on your kids. Mm -hmm. You can concentrate on your goals. You can concentrate on your ministry together. So you know, with that out of the way, with that the the elephant in the room, for say, is out of the way. Knowing that you have someone there that can give you that second helping of food. It's, it's always good, <laughs> you right. know. Someone there to eat off their food—that's great to have, you know. Right. But, but it gets deeper than that. Knowing that there's someone there that is going to give you stability in the long term, um, um, it, it's, it's just, you can't you can't buy that. You know, you can't. Those are things that God just pours in into your marriage. Um, yes, we could be fine where we're at, but like I said earlier. You want to go from from a happy relationship to a joyful relationship, uh, or an unstable relationship to a stable relationship. Right. Uh, uh, and there's benefits uh, emotionally, um, spiritually. I mean, there's so much benefits. So tell me what, what tell me what some changes have happened uh, because we some people will still challenge and say, "Hey, I'm I've been I, I mean I'm talking about Christians. I'm not talking about non christian now. We've been living together for twenty years, and well, I knew a couple in the church that've been living together for almost forty something. And basically, one time, um, the lady sat down and said she wanted to get married, and the guy says, "Why? Everything is fine." <laughs> and, and let me just say this: Let's just be honest. Let, if we if folks out there are listening, we're not trying to put anybody down. Y'all do agree, but you know everything is not one hundred percent fine. It's not. It's, okay. You don't. You you don't know until you actually get married. Then you'll know what the difference was, and it it's huge. Um, from the minute that we left our home and got married and came home, everything was different. I'm not, I'm not saying like everything was cloud nine and we were on cloud nine and you know it was just you know the skies opened up and doves just you know I'm not saying that, but what I'm saying is something happened. Something broke. We didn't quite understand that, but we knew something had changed. The way the atmosphere felt at home um, with each other. Yeah, um, yes, yes. 
with each other, it was just different. You know, you can't just, again, like he said, and I'll, and I'll vouch for that as a woman, you now you know, like, you know, when you look at a man who is not willing to commit to you, you look at him like you don't give him that really that respect because you're like, I don't even know if you're going to be here next week, you know? Um, but when he does commit to you, it means so much to a woman. And so um, the fact that, he, you know, that we got married, it's just like, okay, now I know this is long term. This is a commitment. We're doing this together. And he agreed and I agreed. Like, you know, like how Jesus always had a witness. <laughs> you right. know, there's a witness there to say, look, hey, don't forget, you both agreed. It wasn't, it wasn't, um, y- you know, you, you knew you were making a commitment for the long term. So every, every situation that comes up that was similar to a situation that happened before we were married, the, the perspective is totally different. Well, which, is, which is going to answer a question that Chris put out here and just said, you know, what changed? And you're t- that's what we're talking about right now. Because mm-hmm. Chris had put a, a question here, what changed after? So continue the both of you. Just, just take it. Yeah. I mean, even, you know, intimately, um, you know, that changed. It, again, you won't know until you actually get married. That was a really great change, by the way. <laughs> no, 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 I want to say something. You guys are right. Let's, let's, I know we're not going to do a sex education cl- class. Yeah. Right, but yeah. No, but you're dead right. And I found that because, you know, for a while, Nelly and I uh, uh, shacked up. Oops, I didn't mean to see it, say the word. <laughs> but it took, it took an, it took an aunt, her unsaved aunt, which you all knew now with the Lord, to pick up mm-hmm. the phone one day and say, now I didn't go to church. I just didn't go. And, and I knew better. But it took an unsaved woman to pick up the phone at that time and said, look, stop living together. You know it's wrong and get married in the eyes of God. Here's what she said. It's not wrong in the eyes of man. What is wrong yeah. in the eyes of man? It's just wrong in the eyes of God. And that's what counts because she said this, you're going to need God down somewhere down the road. <laughs> and yeah. you're going to need him. And the point is this, right now you haven't invited me in. So you're, you're on your own. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and I also heard this. I don't know, guys, if this is true. But there was a survey that was taken uh, by a university and said that 70%, even though 60% of marriages that come together break up in divorce, unfortunately, and there's a lot of uh, thing behind that as to why, but 70% of people who are living together cheat in each other. Wow. Whether hidden or it's never known, but they literally cheat in each other. And what they were saying was that the covenant marriage kind of, it kind of bonds people even though nobody's guaranteed, but I mean, full blown cheat. I don't mean, you know, hi and how you're doing, but, but yeah. you, you're right. So that would even come to here to say that that would come to one of the things where he says here, when they put your stays, it stays for sex, not the commitment. So really the commitment quote makes the sex better. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, and, 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 and speaking of that, you know, I mean, it definitely did. Um, uh, you don't, you know, intimately, it's it's awesome. You know, you, there's no fear there when you know that you have someone faithful to you under the covenant. You don't got to worry about, you know, where she at. Is, you know, is she missing around? Uh, right, right. Uh, any kind of STDs or anything like that. You know what I mean? Those things, just you know, right. if you're, if they're if they're both living a a, a a Christian life, a a a life for God, those things are not. Definitely not um, uh, on your plate at all, and you could actually taste the the the. Um, I don't know if you use that word taste, <laughs> but <laughs> right. enjoy right. the fruit of that part of your marriage. Covenant, of right. the, you know, of, right. of the way that God you know ordained it to be, and um, like I said, you just you don't really know until you do get married. Then you realize, wow, this is what it means from going to hey, we're good to. This is what God intended. Well, um, I, I want to break in here because we do have a thing that came in. This is pretty interesting. It came in, and it's a guy named Robbie, and he's asking that we pray for his wife who's terminal. Okay. So we don't know what she's dying, what she term. Well, actually, I don't want to say the word dying, but that's what doctors say, terminal. So can we take that time to both of you and pray for Robbie's wife? He actually left his name, and he uh, did it through uh, sending it through the, the website, through Slido. He says, uh, could you pray for my wife who's terminal? Can we do that right now? Yeah, yeah definitely. Go ahead. Other one you start off. Father God, we just want to give you thanks, Lord, for, yes, for speaking Father. to Robbie right now, Lord. Just, um, 
just over the man like and just knowing and bringing him comfort that there are um, people out out here in the world that are truly going to be praying yes, for he and his wife lord father he of all people would understand the importance and the covenant of marriage especially at this point of life where his wife is terminal so i pray a complete covering over them right now over mm -hmm. over his wife father yes, god i pray yes. for just a huge transformation, a, a, a miracle, Lord. You're still a miracle working God. And I pray, Father God, that you would just, just whatever the case may be, bring him comfort, Lord. Mm -hmm. Just give him a peace, Father God. Like your word says that you bring a peace that surpasses all understanding. There's no way that he can comprehend why or how this happened to them, Lord. But you, God, are faithful and you can bring peace. So I pray that right now in Jesus' name, peace with yes. him, peace with his wife. Yes. I pray that even right now where yes. his wife is, Father God, yes. and with, with uh, I just pray that she too have peace yes. and comfort, mm -hmm. Lord, because she is not dead, Father God. Yes. She is still alive, yes. and her spirit is still within yes. her. So bring her peace, bring her comfort, yes. and knowing too, Father God, that they have just this, this, this joint covenant with each other yes. that will just just continue to go father god and grow in jesus mighty name Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Because we had to get that one out. And I want to remind the folks you're watching the Man Like Radio or you're joining in. Welcome. I want to just say this. We're going to go over time because this is a really good subject and we can't let this one go. So let's get back to this because one of the questions that Chris asked, he asked another one. And he says, um, basically what he was saying is why marry when, when the people feel they're secure? Would you agree with that? Well, you know... That is definitely a trick of the enemy, you know, the secure, the secure, the secureness, um, like I said, it's not, how can I say, how can I explain it? Um, it's not genuine. It's not a genuine security. Yes, it might be tangible. Yes, it may feel like, mm -hmm. like, um, like we are one, but spiritually, you know, this is where, this is where on the spiritual aspect, breakthroughs happen in your in your in your relationship like i said you could you could um be together but not reap the benefits of marriage there there is such an upside and the benefit of a marriage that that um common law married people will never receive never receive you know uh it says uh here in ecclesiastes 4 4 9 10 Four, nine to ten, uh, two are better than one because they have good reward for their labor. So the reward, the reward uh, under the covenant, they get they get extra reward for their labor. And, and when they labor here is working at your marriage, working under the covenant with God. And it also goes on to say, for if they fall, one will lift up his companion. So if I fall, which I've fell many times, uh, I had Sonia there to pick me up. And it also goes on to say, but woe to him who is alone when he falls, for he has no one to help him. Mm. And, and, you know, and not that, you know, that's where, well, I have somebody, I have somebody. Right. Yes, you have somebody. But do you have them with the covenant keeper, which is the creator of heaven and earth, there to give you the strength to pick up? your 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 mate your husband or your wife right right um, right you know so it's an added strength to your to your marriage and you will never never experience that until you actually walk into the covenant right with, right, with right. your with your with your other part Okay, so, so, so before you, let me throw this question out to you, and then you can come back with that, Sonia. So, because this is for Sonia. The question was asked again by Chris. Sonia, as a as a, someone's wife, how special is that to you? It's very special. Uh, I don't believe that women take that lightly, but for me personally, it's extremely special. Robert, uh, I'm sorry, Robert. Do you, Robert, do you think that we as men take it lightly sometimes? Uh, or are we, are we doing it in a way like because I think women think that we really don't care sometimes but we really do <laughs> oh yeah definitely I mean they, they think that we're just uh, like we're like that tree I heard a guy say this not too long or we're in the garden of Eden we're the tree of knowledge and good, we're, just, we're just there <laughs> and the woman has to do something to get the guy to react <laughs> what do you, you know it's not something that that men take lightly. By all means, trust me, we wouldn't have put a ring on it if we weren't going to take it serious. Because men, the way men think, we could be single for the rest of our life and we'll be completely okay with it. That was the that's the mindset of a man, you right. know. 
we really don't need anybody. But for us to, you know, uh, 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 find a good woman um, and, and marry her, um, and we t- it's, it's great to say that I have a wife. It's awesome to say that I have a wife. You know, it's it's a blessing to say that I have a wife. In Proverbs 8, 18.22, it says, Whoever finds a wife finds something good and has, and has obtained favor from the Lord. So if we're getting favor from the Lord because we found a wife, I mean, how amazing is that? I mean, how right. amazing uh, uh, is that? So um, it's something that, that as men, married Christian men, do honor... Um, Maybe sometimes we might be bad at expressing it or always, you know, sending flowers and, and all that. <laughs> it's something that we must work on as we go, like on the job training, type, so to speak. But uh, other than that, you know, no, it's it's something that us men, we don't take lightly, no matter what it looks like. Well, I do want to say one thing here. One of the things we dealt with, it says, can I, can I, be, I can bail out when I want to. Would you agree if someone says that they're really not really seriously about getting married? No, I, definitely not. Yeah, <laughs> so I can just bail out when I want because you can bail. Out, I mean, even though it's not proper in many ways, I mean, there's some you can bail out in the marriage. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I mean, just yeah. pay more, just cost you more money. But nowadays, yeah, yeah. the laws changing, it's costing everybody money now. But go ahead, <laughs> go ahead. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I agree. I mean, but I think that was the reason why Robert said that his, you know, his closet was his trunk for <laughs> for a while because it is easier just to say, you know. And, um, you know, like, but on that same note, like, as we were talking earlier, it's just, there's a lot, there is a huge difference. And, and the commitment with the, for a woman to know that a man is willing to commit to her, it, it just, for a woman, it does change a lot. And it, right. and it does go to know that, you know, I, hey, I'm, I'm his wife, you know, I'm his wife, you know? Right. And so to be comfortable saying, well, we're doing good. It's like, well, well, then why not? Why not get married? If you see yourself with that person for the rest of your life, and, you know, there's always that fear, well, I don't want to mess anything up or jinx it or, you know, people say stuff like that, but that's not it. It's just, don't, that's the enemy, and that's the lie of the enemy to just show you that everything's good, we don't want to mess it up, because the enemy's not, I think what Robert was trying to say earlier about who's blessing you is just that, the enemy is not going to fight you when you're kind of like in his court, should I say? I don't want to, I don't know if that was a good thing to say, but you know, when you're, you're just, it's, I mean, you're doing the things the way that, um, he would, he's okay with. So if there's nothing to fight, you know, but right. when you just underneath that covenant, that's when you're going to be tested on that faith, mm-hmm. that faith that you have in, the Lord to hold your 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 marriage together to stay committed for so long. Right. Well, well uh, Chris put another thing out here. I mean, Chris is rolling, man. <laughs> he, he put a thing out here, and he said, "Well, it's kind of like this: if someone disrespects your girlfriend, that's okay. But they disrespect your wife, that's not okay." Can I just add to that? Can I just add to that? No, Chris, yeah. it's not okay to disrespect your girlfriend. Also, but you did bring a good point. It you you kind of you kind of get it you kind of get it harder, or I should say, take it more. When your wife is disrespected or husband, agree? Yeah, definitely, definitely agree with Chris there, man. Yeah. So I think that, it has to go with that whole being one. You know, it's kind of like <laughs> you, if you talk about the wife, you talk about me. You know, if you talk about my wife, you talk about me because we're all one. And, and the reason why I'm saying that because Joseph in the Bible, he was not married to Mary yet; he was engaged. But even through that, he wanted to put her away privately, not before everybody else. If it, I mean, yeah. he was a good guy. If he was one of the Pharisees, man, he'd have blasted all over the temple and took her name out there. She's pregnant, and she done <laughs> cheating me. And, and yeah. they weren't even married yet. Now, thinking of this, they weren't even married yet. They took it that serious before they got married. How much more when you get married, correct? Yeah, definitely. How much more when you get married? I mean, it's like, it's, it, I mean, that that goes back to what we were saying earlier. There is a difference between living together, being happy, than getting married. It's just, there, there is a difference on all levels. Disrespect, respect, love. Um, you know, one thing about marriage, the benefit of being married is, I mean, it's like this. You wouldn't go, you wouldn't go to work and, and have a nine to five and have horrible benefits or have no benefits at all. Right. And that's when you get a paycheck. I mean, you wouldn't, and right. you wouldn't do it. Right. And on that same note, I mean, any transaction in life that you do, um, generally you want it, 
you you want the person you want a witness you want in writing you want you want something to say hey like you know well, no matter what it is whether you have credit you know you know there's all kinds of commitments that are made every day that people are not fearful of doing and um you know why why would marriage it's kind of like one of those things like why do they take the bibles out of school or why do they it, because there's something powerful behind it spiritually there truly is and um it, just with that so why not if it if it doesn't if it doesn't mean that much then why the fear of um just get married get married and see i mean like you said yeah, I mean, you can get divorced after you get married, and that could be a fear. Well, I don't ever want to get divorced, or I'm unsure. But right. I mean, I mean, not not that we can, you know, say right, that the right, right, right. Yes. You can. I mean, you. I mean, anybody can um, walk out on anybody at any given moment. Right, right. So you know, so it's like to know what you're missing. You have to. Okay, so here, here's a question that came in by by uh, Aunt Ayala. Uh, she put here. Uh, I'm thinking it's a, it's a woman. She says, uh, why stay married when the person, when the, I guess the husband or whatever, is always at, uh, uh, the family's house all the time, a mother's home. <laughs> I mean, that, I'm glad that, 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 say that, thing like that. I know that you're, <laughs> because I will say this. Can I just say one thing to add to that? Not to add, to give her more fuel, but one of the things we're looking at here was, um, uh, I, I saw it, afraid my family won't accept her. Uh, I always say this. I'm marrying Nellie. I took Nellie home, you know what I'm saying? I'm sleeping beside her. I'm paying, you know, I have to ask my family, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm not yeah. marrying, I'm marrying her, you know. But what would you say to a case like that? We have a situation here where we don't know all the stories because I know there's two sides to every story. My grandma would say there's a three sides, your side, my side, and the truth. Yeah. So we don't know <laughs> yeah. all the things, okay? Only, so what, what would you say in a case like that, maybe in a case of encouragement or guidance? Okay, so the question is, why stay married to a guy who's always at the at the parents' house? Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Yes. Um, that's a good question. I'd like to answer that one. Um, uh oh. I, <laughs> so, um, to me, in in Hosea two, um, it says that you know it's talking about she ha basically where she has to acknowledge. It says she has to acknowledge that I was the one who gave her the grain, the new wine and oil, who lavished on her the silver and gold, which they used for ball. So in this, she's just basically saying that this, this woman, and I know this is, we're going to go directly into the question, but just to go to this little spiritual aspect in scripture, um, the woman, to stay married, you're, if you're in a marriage, you have to understand where your source comes from. Mm -hmm. And so when you, when you get married, it's like in that where I was saying in Genesis where the longing is for her husband. Mm -hmm. So now going into deeper the way God ordained it, remember he is the bridegroom and we are the bride. So when you come into this marriage and you commit and you say, okay, well, I didn't sign up for this. I thought things were going to be better. I thought we were going to be one, you know, you know, you're going to ask me permission. I'm going to ask you permission. If we don't agree, we're going to compromise. You know, you just think all these things. But at the end of the day, on this, and Hosea too, is saying she's going to chase after these lovers, but not catch them. No, I understand that in this being married, this isn't just any person. This is your husband. So you have that expectation for him to be there. But at the end of the day, in the scriptures saying, finding our source, don't forget where you, where everything and all of your source and your completion and your identity comes from. It comes from, it comes from him. It comes from our Lord and Savior. Right, right. So when you find that completeness and wholeness, you're, you have that complete confidence in who you are. I know it can get irritating and kind of get frustrating sometimes, but as a word of encouragement, when you have that wholeness and completeness and you're not your whole identity isn't just in my husband here on earth but my husband the okay. ultimate yes. husband yes 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 then then right. then you can be confident saying okay that's fine you know i always consider that like my date nights with my lord and savior you know like <laughs> wow. i mean so yes so so you know, there's just different. This is where you find your wholeness and your completeness, Definitely. and I think that's where, in, where I was saying in Genesis, where he says, "And your husband will rule over you." I think if you take that even deeper and further, mm -hmm. you find that it's easier to allow your husband, the bridegroom, 
the true, our Lord and Savior, rule over us and have, have that sovereignty, then it flows into the marriage also. Right, and, and, I, and I want to encourage them also not to be afraid to talk, to talk this yeah. out, sit down, and ask God to give you the right time, and talk it out. Let me, we got one more question before we have to go. I know they're coming in. I want to thank all of you that's getting these questions here, but we've got one more here I want to put out here. But I'm going to turn this to Robert. You think I turned to the woman, Sonia, but I'm going to turn to Robert, and then we're going to close. We're actually going over our time, but we have to because it's so awesome. Okay, Robert, this lady says, this is a woman, how do I convince my man to marry me? Again, we don't know all the story behind this but how what would you say as a man's point of view well first go to god um stay stay grounded in in church i tell you that it wasn't until i saw the change in my wife that i wanted to marry her um i don't know this lady who, who she is or what her actions are but um I, I know I know that it wasn't until I saw the true love of Christ come out of my wife that made me attracted to her more than any time since I've known her. So I would just encourage you to uh, give it to God. Um, uh, pray, 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 and just know that ultimately... Um, Seek going after Christ and and Him becoming your 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 husband, of course, like He is now. That the change inevitably will come once the change uh, mm -hmm. will come. Well, the change will come. I mean, the, there's really no convincing. I mean, God. I mean, God's going to have to have right. a, a move in the hearts of the man. Yes, the man. very good, very good. Yeah. Um, but I would just say, stay the course. Give it to God. Um, and, and, and be the change that you want your husband to be. Um, that's what attracted me to my wife. Um, and of course, um, uh, her standing righteousness in, in all areas of her walk. And, and you all both agree that you, and you said it earlier, you do look at each other differently. I know that when Mar Nelly and I got married, uh, you don't realize it. Maybe now, because of all the years you look back, uh, they always say the biggest thing to people when they get older, the greatest regret is what they didn't do. But I can say you do look at each other differently once you're married. You do find yeah. that. Right. Yeah. Right. And I think to add to that, too, that last question, it's just standing for righteousness. I mean, when a man has, when it appears to the man, because maybe he doesn't know completely spiritually what he's missing, um, that everything, he has all the benefits of a marriage it, it's easier to stay in that but if a, if a woman would make that righteous stand and not do a hundred percent of the things that you know married couples do um you know and ask god and pray and just seek him and how you should handle that and how you should stand for righteousness in in certain areas so that God could have his way in the man's heart too, in right. your heart right. and also in the man's heart. And, and I want to say this because uh, Ayala got another thing back in saying it's been 20 years of marriage, talking about the man uh, over at the family's house. But I want to say this to her, uh, uh, that um, you need to find out there's something that's drawing if after 20 years this had just started, would you agree? And it's like yeah. a, a, say something, if you haven't nipped it 20 years ago in the bud, I'm talking about when I say nip it, if you haven't set your ground rules on both sides yes. of the fence, then you're going to expect down the road it's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. But if yeah. you haven't, all of a sudden it flips. Will you both agree that there's something there that maybe either uh, that she has to really reach out to and kind of, not, not necessarily change, because i got to give it to God, but reach out and find out as to why, what is the draw. Not get suspicious, but what's drawing. Yeah, yeah definitely. A lack of, of because we will agree in every marriage and even living together that there comes times when you know you you some you start losing interest in certain areas. You got to wonder why? Why are we losing interest? You know. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Uh, I, you yeah, know, yeah. I, I, I'll say this too. Also, getting back to the sexual reference, as you get older, I hear this. I hear women say to the husband, you know, you still love me like the beginning. Well, you didn't look like you used to in the beginning. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right, ladies, don't, don't throw stones. But that has nothing to do with it. Um, no. It's, you know, I, I, and I'm, I, out of dis I'm not saying out of disrespect. I've heard a Christian lady say this one time in a, in a teaching, uh, Robin Sunday. They said, no matter how old you get, it still feels good. And what they, what she meant was that, that love and relationship, no matter how old you get, don't care what everybody says and all oh, that guy, woman, it's that love there and yeah, that commitment awesome. that makes it like you're, you're 20 years old. 
Yeah, yeah definitely, definitely. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, I, we've got another one in the history books. Can you believe that, guys? <laughs> awesome. I, I want you to take this t- time out now and pray for some of the folks out there, and you can both just do it together and and just pray for some of the folks out there before we close off. Okay. Um, let's see. Woman, you want to take it? I'm going to take it. Father God, we just want to give you thanks, Lord, for this for this man like radio, Father God, for your technology, Lord, that we're able to go across the airways, Lord, to speak life, and we speak life, Lord, out there to all that is uh, listening and the watchers and the listeners, Father God. We want to speak uh, a life into their marriages or their relationships, Father God. Remove any kind of fear, any kind of fear that's trying to to keep them to keep them from not going under your covenant, Father God. We rebuke the schemes of the enemy father god and we we speak peace and we we speak peace upon these relationships father god that they that father god that that the words spoken here today lord were not uh, ours but the holy spirit led words father god coming from from um from from the creator himself speaking to the hearts of men and women father god listening today father god we just want to continue to say lord father god we thank you father god for the marriage covenant father god today father god because the marriage covenant father god you blessed from the beginning of genesis father god and it's still active and alive Mm -hmm. today father god and we thank you for it father god and we just pray for those out there that want to get married and the spouse might not want to father god we pray a perfect and alignment Mm -hmm. father god perfect order and, and homes, Father God. Perfect yes. order with the children, Father God, and stepchildren, Father God. We speak, we speak, Father God, um, um, life and abundant of life, Father God, under one uh, that that the, the covenant, uh, the Creator will come under one the households of all those listening, Father God, and correct what needs to be corrected, Father God, and 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 loose what needs to be loose from their lives, Father God, so that they'll be able to see more clearer and hear more clearer the words of the scriptures of the pages of of, of of your book, Father God, of your Bible, Lord. So I just I speak life, abundance of life, Father God, and I just want to say. Um, now we love you and the Lord, guys. You keep those heads up. Yes. Uh, uh, um, it also says, I want to read this in Matthew eighteen twenty, for where two or more are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them, Father God. So I just speak that over the marriages, Father God, because uh, uh, it, it, it's just another example of where where two or more. So if you if you're at home tonight and and, and you're with your wife and and you've heard this message, uh, take that time to pray, pray over each other. Pray over the atmosphere and watch and see the breakthroughs and see the 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 righteous the righteousness will come off of each other, Father God, and and just know that it is you that draws and let no man break uh, what you've what you've um, have you brought together, Father God, and we just thank you for what you're doing in, in my life and my marriage. And my and, and pastor's marriage and my, my family's marriages, Father God, and I speak mar- I speak um, life into those mm-hmm. uh, that are not married right now, Father, that are soon to be married, and we're leaving by faith, Lord, yes. and know that God's going to do something new in God's relationship. Yeah, Amen. Thanks. Amen. Amen. Well, I want to thank the both of y'all. Y'all did a good job. You know, this goes down in the history books as the log- longest man like. Broadcast so far, okay. So I don't know if somebody will come and beat it n- along the way, but anyway, uh, I gotta tell all the other co-hosts, Jeff Daniels, uh, Arthur Copper, and Stan Farrell, that y'all blew them out of the, roo- the water. <laughs> Anyway, we love you all, and just want to tell you once again, you can go to manlightradio.com, manlightradio.com, where you can get all more information, watch all our previous, or download the previous podcast, or you can also go to, uh, it's, I should say, email us at manlightradio at gmail.com, manlightradio at gmail.com. And but one more thing, if you have an iPhone, you can tell Siri by, by going to the podcast and, and uh, uh, subscribing to us, and you can tell Siri to pay, play the Manlight Radio podcast. Same thing with Google. Same thing. You can and also Alexa. But just make sure you're subscribing to the podcast first. Well, we will see you next time. I'll talk to you next time on the Manlight Radio Podcast. I'm Richard Boyd on behalf of Robert and Sonia Cantu. On behalf of all of our other co-hosts, Jeff Daniels, Arthur Corpepper, and Stan Farrell. We'll see you next time on the Manlight Radio. Thank you once again for joining us on this Manlight Podcast. Please take time and email us at Manlight Radio at gmail.com. Once again, that's manlikeradio at gmail.com. Manlike Podcast is a production of RN Board Productions and Love Gospel Network. Please seek a qualified professional in the area you need immediate help.